Across Nigeria, ride railing drivers are protesting. They are demanding that Uber, Boat, and all the ride hailing companies increase their fares by at least 200%. A typical morning in Lagos is rush hour, a good time of the day for cab drivers. But on Wednesday, ride hailing drivers, or think Uber, Boat, Lag Ride, In Driver, are protesting at the direction of the Amalgamated Union of Our Based Transport Workers of Nigeria. The drivers are following a seat at home order until the ride hailing companies increase their base fares. According to a statement from the union, the rise by the app based companies was between 25 and 30 percent, significantly less than the union's demand of a 200 percent increase and accordingly a 50 percent reduction in commission. Now, the strike which got underway on Wednesday was also a response to the hefty commission fees established by Uber and Boat, two of Nigeria's largest ride hailing companies. On the show today, we'll keep an eye on the strike, their demands and other issues. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Well, welcome back. We'll begin with a round of major business stories. President Bola Tinubu has directed the National Economic Council, NEC, led by Vice President Kashim Shatima, to begin the process of working on interventions to ameliorate the impact of fuel subsidy removal on Nigerians. Ogun State Governor Dagbo Abiodun stated this after leading some major oil marketers on a court to call on President Tinubu at the President Shovila Abuja. Addressing State House correspondent after the meeting, he said the marketers were in the presidential villa to express solidarity with the president for his bold decision to end subsidy payment. The president has announced today that, you know, NEC should immediately begin uh, to sit, uh, led by His Excellency the Vice President, um, uh, Senator uh, uh, Akashim Shetima, and the committee of NEC alongside, you know, with the economic team and marketers should sit down and come up with a wholesome uh, um, approach that would be beneficial uh, to the common man uh, and generality of, of Nigerians. We all collectively agree that we're going to work at providing real mass transit buses that work. The ones that will run on CNG, which is the compressed natural gas and diesel interchangeably. And hopefully we're going to start with about 50 to 100. And that is in the very, very short term. There are like 50 seater buses. Oh. The buses are probably at the cost of about 100 million naira each. So they are donating 100 buses, that's 10 billion, just from the marketers. By the grace of God, within the next 30 days, we are going to be launching what we call our e-mobility, which allows us to take our petrol-powered Okadas back from the riders and offer them electric motorcycles. So you will begin to see this kind of initiative across the length and breadth of the country. Now, 10 publicly listed commercial banks in Nigeria incurred 227.3 billion naira in banking sector resolution cost to the Assets Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, in 2022. Compared to the previous year of 192.14 billion naira, the AMCON expense by the banks increased by 18.3% year on year. This is according to data extracted from the audited reports of the banks. The increase in Amcon banking sector resolution cost is following a 23.7% increase in the total assets of the banks. Findings revealed that the total assets of the 10 banks increased from 90 or 49.1 trillion naira recorded as of December 2021 to 60.7 trillion naira in 2022, representing an increase of 11.62 trillion naira in one year. Moving on, the World Bank has recently disclosed its projections for Nigeria's economic growth, estimating it at 2.8% in 2023, with a slight revision since January and a marginal increase to 3% in 2024. However, the bank emphasizes that this growth rate will only result in a meager per capita income growth of 0.4% per year over 
on average in 2023 to 2024, falling far short of what is necessary to make significant progress in reducing extreme poverty. Additionally, the report warns of various obstacles, including foreign exchange restrictions, high living costs, security challenges, and limited fiscal space, which are expected to impede growth momentum, as highlighted in the June 2023 Global Outlook. And finally, in business roundup, a Nigerian equities market closed negative as the key market indicator declined by 14.33% or basis point amid positive market breadth. The NGX all share index declined by 0.03% to close at 56,024.52 BPS as against the 0.42% gain recorded previously the close at 56,038.85 basis point at the end of the last trading session. In Naira terms, the NGX market cap records 7.81 billion Naira loss. Year to date, the NGX ASI stands at 9.31%. The total value of volume traded advanced by 23.3% to close at 397.62 million Naira, valued at 6.54 billion, and traded in 5,613 deals. And that's business roundup for today. We'll take a quick break and I'll be introducing my guests shortly. Don't go away. <laughs> 